Before his birth, he lost his father, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Within the first three, four, five years of his life, he lost his mother. And everyone who cared for him would depart from his life. Grandfather and uncles. His spouse Khadija radiallahu anha wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't bury one son or two or three or four. Five children, ya Abdullah. With his own hand, he would place them in the ground at seeing people who raised him, knew of his honesty and trustworthiness, for no reason claiming him unstable, dishonest, fraudulent. That you see these people, their footmarks are all over you, they're in every part of your life. They know you like they know the back of their hand. It's not that they deny that you have come with truth, but it's that they have a distaste and a distrust to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a hatred for what is right. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked into the hearts of the people of the earth. And it's as if a, the response to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that if no one on earth wants you, come up to the heavens and see what your honor and place is. Umar would enter upon him in his masjid as he was sleeping on a straw mat that had bruised his blessed skin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umar was a tough man and he saw the back of the Prophet sallam, scratched and bruised and discolored by the harshness of the dunya. When the world could be at his feet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umar wept and he said, O Messenger of Allah, the kings of Persia, the Romans, they have this Naeem, wa anta Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet would say, Wa mali wa dunya. What do I need from the dunya? He faced as an individual what an ummah faces in its collection. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Mecca refused to accept, the Prophet وسلم, determined to head out to the people of Ta'if. And as he entered upon them, hoping to have a moment of an audience to speak in truthfulness and honesty about faith, they released upon him the imbeciles of their society, who they had given boulders and rocks, and they said, when you see him, pellet him. And the Prophet ﷺ was so injured by it. And he had to walk that mile of condemnation to lead himself out of Ta'if, being abused, and hurled until a Christian invited him to a place of refuge and sat him in a place under the shade of some trees and gave him something to eat and some water to bathe and to cleanse himself with. The Prophet made a dua, O most gracious of those who show graciousness and favor. O oh, the merciful of those who show mercy, to who have you left me? To an enemy who seeks to obliterate me? Have you given me over to relatives of mine who you've subjugated me to, O oh Allah? Nevertheless, O oh Allah, if no anger is the cause of this, I am willing to withstand it, O oh Allah. Although I petition you for your mercy, which is more comprehensive and expansive for me. I seek my protection in, in the light of your face that gives radiance to everything in the heavens and the earth. That you don't bring down any of your anger upon me, O oh Allah. 
and it's at that moment it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked into the hearts of the people of the earth and it's as if a, the response to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that if no one on earth wants you come up to the heavens and see what your honor and place is in that year of al isra wal ma'raj which is unknown definitively to the ulama allah opened for him a gateway out of this worldly life into the upper heavens glorified is allah in full control is allah who has transported in a night journey jibril descends to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and operates on him jibril opens his chest and washes his heart with the water of zamzam and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is cleansed of anger and hatred and iman and hikmah is added to his heart after being cleansed the Prophet ﷺ is summoned by Jibreel to Al-Buraq. That the Prophet would say that it would take its one step to the extent of the horizon. And subhanAllah, as he comes to ride Al-Buraq, it begins to cause a stir. And Jibreel is the one who settles it down and says, Mount him, O Muhammad ﷺ. When the Prophet ﷺ arrives in Bayt Al-Maqdis, Jibreel orders the Prophet ﷺ to tie his buraq to the ring that the prophets used to always tie their animals in. After having led the prophets of Allah in prayer, the Prophet ﷺ ascends. The heavens' gates are closed. The angels of the first heaven, they say, Who are you? To Jibreel. Salam, Allahu Akbar. To Muhammad sallallahu who are you? He says, Ana Jibreel. He identifies himself. Wa ma'i Muhammad. Have you been sent to bring him up? Or is he allowed to ascend? Yes, he's been asked for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's only after that that the angels open the first heaven and greet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with Salaam. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is greeted with Salaam by the angels, each and every one of them smiles at him. And each and every one of them precedes him with Salaam. Until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees the angel Malik. He doesn't know it is the guardian of Jahannam. And the Prophet sees him, an angel who has a sternness, an un comfortable persona the prophet is taken aback and asks jibreel who is this and jibreel says this is malik the governor the maintainer of jahannam ya muhammad precede him with salam in the first heaven he meets adam alayhi salam in the second heaven isa wa yahya in the third heaven he meets harun in the next idris in the next musa in the next Ibrahim alayhi salam at the final heaven. And the Prophet sallam, remarks that he saw no man who looked closer to him in likeness than Ibrahim. And Ibrahim was sitting with his back leaning against Al Bayt Al Ma'mur, the Kaaba of the heavens. And then the Prophet sallam, is invited to Sidrat al Muntaha, to the Lot tree, which is the furthest extent that Jibreel can go to. And no one before him or after him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has transcended that barrier. And the Prophet Sallallahu is brought towards Allah and communes with Allah and speaks with Allah. The first is that the Prophet Sallallahu is given by Allah directly the last two verses of Surah Al Baqarah. And the second was the writing down of salah upon our ummah. Fifty prayers a day. And the Prophet accepted it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he descended, 
Musa asked him, what have you been given? He said, 50 salah. He said, go back. Go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. I've been tested with Bani Israel. Your ummah will not be able to do 50 salah, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He returns to Allah. Not once or twice or three. From 50 to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10. Go back, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I will go back. To five. Go back, Ya Muhammad. No. And the Prophet وسلم, says, I have a shyness between myself and Allah. Would you have believed if he came that next morning and said, and there were Sahaba who recanted faith. There were people who accepted faith and on account of this test, they lost it. And this is where men were made like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, where he became a Siddiq. I believe he brings news from the heavens. How can I not believe that Allah in the heavens would take him to him? I believe in much greater than this. If I can believe that Jibreel descends, why can't I believe that Jibreel can escort him up? If I can believe in the news from the heavens, I can believe in what he has said. If he said it, it's truth. I don't even have to hear it from him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Al-Isra wal Mi'raj is about your Iman. Do you have that belief in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do you have that love for Bayt Al-Maqdis? Do you have that diligence in your Salah? That willingness to honor Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? And finally, do you my dear brother and sister, have the desire to connect with the Qur'an on a greater level than just the surface. And to look into the word of Allah and to extract from it the lessons that will upright and adjust my life and your life. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins, hides our shame, and cures our hearts from all evil and neglect. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.